ease with which he slides in all directions, controlling the ball like a yo-yo, transcends everything we've seen in basketball. Look at Curry, man. So inspirational. <laughs> Shout out my boy three. Flight. I What's good? Dark Knight Gang and it's Stank Gang Gang. Today I'm about to do a video from the homie Non Stop Sports. This one right here is titled Top 10 Ball Handlers in NBA History. Y'all requested it. Don't trip me now. I got y'all. NBA History? That's, that's pretty difficult to say. But definitely Kyrie, Steph, James Harden. Maybe John Wall. John Wall's a really good ball handler as well. I don't know if I'll put John Wall in there. Allen Iverson. Uh, White Chocolate. What was White Chocolate name? I forgot the homie name. Jason something. But White Chocolate, Allen Iverson, Kyrie, James Harden, Steph Curry. Gotta be. Those, those five for sure gotta be in here. You feel me? Before we watch this video, let me know at least five of them that you think are gonna be in here. Somebody better not. You better not say LeBron. I will slap you. <laughs> Okay, LeBron is a GOAT, but when it comes to ball handling, nah. <laughs> All right, how about this video? Like I said, I'm dropping four or five reactions today, so be on the lookout for that, bruh, bruh. Let's hop into this video. Let's go. A mean crossover, a sexy Euro step, or a nasty ankle breaker are one of the most spectacular things you can see in basketball. These True. NBA players have done those moves more than anyone else. Here are the 10 best ball handlers in NBA history. Oh, CP3. Mm, Number 10, maybe. Isaiah Thomas. Isaiah Thomas was one of the fastest point guards ever, and he kept the ball so close to the ground when he dribbled that it was extremely hard to alter his dribble and affect where he wanted to go. Zeke's mm. ball handling was shifty. It was creative, and it seemed like he was never out of rhythm. He carved the fences up with his lightning quick first step, and then he'd either take a slaloming drive to the basket, make a crisp pass to a cutter, or a stop and pop J over a retreating defender. He did all this damage in the era with hand checking, and when a lot of ball carrying we see today was illegal, which made it harder for small guards like him to dominate. And yet, <clears throat> dominate is exactly what he did. I never watched Isaiah Thomas. I feel like that was before my time. You know what I'm saying? I never went back and watched highlights of him as well. So I had no clue. But okay, let's keep it going. Nine, Steve Nash. Steve Nash is dope. Phoenix I didn't know he was known for his. I didn't know he was known for his handle. I thought he was known for his passing and just being a great point guard. The most attractive team in all of basketball, and it was all because of one scrawny, long-haired white dude named Steve Nash. And while the media called the Suns' offense seven seconds or less, Nash's teammate Quentin Richardson eloquently called it trying to keep up with this little mother effort. Nash wasn't <laughs> athletic by any means, but he dribbled the ball perfectly going full speed, and he changed direction so quickly that he was one of the Ooh, most evasive nice. point guards ever. Yeah, Nash's nice. hand-eye coordination was off the charts, and he'd often make one-handed passes while running super fast, mm -hmm. not leaving the defenders even a split second to react. Everything he did, he did in motion, and yet he was one of the most efficient shooters ever, and one of the deadliest pick-and-roll facilitators. Steve Nash was a ball-handling wizard, and what he did on the court was often pure Ooh. magic. Yeah, that was Number a beautiful eight, pass. Tim Hardaway. Standing Tim Hardaway? Feet, Tim Hardaway had a low center of gravity. He was really quick, but also quite stocky, which made it easy for him to bump off defenders. It was a combination that made him extremely tough to guard and propelled him to five NBA All-Star selections. Yeah, but yeah, what yeah. made Tim Hardaway famous more than anything else My was his brother killer loved Tim crossover. Hardaway. Many players had an effective crossover, but Hardaway's was arguably the fastest. Before he injured his knee, his change of direction was so quick and snappy that the defenders could never react in time Ooh, to stop it, quick. even though they all knew yeah, what was yeah. coming. Number seven, Chris Paul. CP3. Chris Paul is called point god for a reason. Yeah. Simply put, CP doesn't have any deficiencies in his game. True. Despite only six feet in height, he is incredibly strong and fundamentally sound, yeah. which made him into one of the best defenders ever at his position. On offense, he's a floor general par excellence. Yes, Paul is one of only six players Passing, to notch 10,000 assists in the NBA. Just being a general. And he routinely made below average players look great with his passes. Yeah, a man. pick and roll maestro. He can dissect every defense and punish every defender who overextends or is late in coverage. 
or he can just finish himself because he's a phenomenal shooter as well. And everything is set up with incredible footwork and ball handling. It's amazing to see how Chris Paul oh, can create separation there, for a though. shot seemingly every time he wants to, Ooh. even though he's usually the shortest player Ooh, on the court. Number beautiful. six. James Harden. James Harden, that's there are many people crazy. who are always right, ready right. to criticize James Harden. He's I not a great James defensive Harden. player. He dribbles too much. He never made it far in the playoffs. While there is some truth to all those arguments, no one can dispute that James Harden has mastered the game of basketball like few other players. Yeah. If I had to describe Harden with one word, that word would be artist. Because what James mm. is doing with the basketball in his hands Pure is art, art huh? in its purest form. Yeah, yeah, I He feel basically you. invented the step back three, which that, is an unguardable move. You can only hope that he misses. He has a back. No, his step back is just next level. People have always done the step back, but not like James. The hard crossing people over. A That's master's crazy. in throw stepping to the basket and a PhD in drawing fouls. He is not Fresh. dominating with sides. He's not overly fast nor athletic. And mm -hmm. yet, he's certainly among the best five offensive players who ever played. Oh. Oh, While yeah. the ankles of poor Wesley Johnson have probably recovered, his psyche is probably <laughs> still tormented by that Harden crossover, You're which so is one of it. the most disrespectful so drops it, in bro. NBA history. Number five, Jason Williams. Jason Williams! Jason Williams' is ball yeah, that's was name. off the charts, and there was nothing he couldn't do with the ball. They say that Williams was allergic to simple bounce passes, and that's why he often passed with his elbow, behind the back, through his legs, through the opponent's legs, and without looking. Jason was incredibly fast. He would get into the paint in a flash, and most often, he would fake the heck out of defenders trying to guard him, with Gary Payton as the most notable example. Because of his flair and attractiveness, he was immediately a fan favorite. And as a basketball fan, you simply had to love him. Yeah, even though man. his numbers were average, and he was never even close to being an all-star, White Chocolate played with such passion and style. My older brother really liked him, too. You always pay a ticket to see play. Number four, Steph Curry. Steph! You got a man number is four? Widely considered the greatest shooter to You got a man number four? I would have Kyrie, Steph, and James Harden top three, bro. But let's see. Play. And it's only a matter of time until he breaks Ray Allen's record for most three-pointers made. But it's not just the sheer quantity of made threes that makes Steph into the goat of all shooters. What separates Steph from great shooters like Ray Allen or Klay Thompson is his uncanny Hands. ability to create off the dribble and gain opportunities to shoot with his phenomenal ball handling yes, skills. Sir. His ability to hit pull-up threes in transition after a step back or a crossover and from all possible angles is what makes him unique. James Harden is perhaps a more efficient dribbler because of his physical strength. Kyrie Irving is more aggressive in getting to the cup. But yes, Curry, sir. Curry That's like Kyrie, my favorite. In chess. He is the only man Kyrie, I've seen who can the ball insane. forwards, backwards, right. and laterally all equally well. The way he moves across the floor, the ease with which he slides in all directions, controlling the ball like a yo-yo, transcends everything we've seen in basketball. Look at Curry, man. So inspirational. <laughs> Shout out my boy Flight. Jamal Crawford. Oh, if Jamal any NBA Crawford, player you right. Played NBA basketball Better like it's that? just another game of pickup. Switch. It was Jamal Crawford. Jamal was skinny. He didn't play much defense, and he wasn't keen on passing the rock once he got a hold of it. But he could score with the best of them. And that was because of his exceptional ball handling skills. His shake and bake is one of the prettiest moves in nice. NBA history. Yeah, that was and nice. it looked like it came straight up from some and one mixtape. When he danced with the ball, everything else faded away. And it was like watching figure skating with a basketball. That and Jamal would never slip. While the opponents often looked like they were on ice, the defender could be both bigger, stronger, and faster than him. But it didn't matter. Whoever was guarding him, Jamal could make them look like a fool in a split second. Jamal Number Crawford two, is nice. Allen Iverson. Oh, yes, he duh. was a ball hog who often took the <laughs> tough shots when he could have passed. Yes, he was skinny. But he got he Kyrie on the one. He played ISO heavy point. hero ball, which wasn't pretty if you favored past first point guards of the '80s. Iverson always was and remained a player that based his game on pure instinct. Nothing in his game made you think oh, Iverson was my older to brother's that favorite. Move a lot because you know. He didn't really like practice that much, and yet there was nothing you could do against him. Most of his 26,000 points in the mm. NBA came off the dribble, as he would very often simply ignore four of his teammates. His ability to drive <laughs> to the basket was unparalleled this by nigga any did not player practice. of his era. Practice? No matter how about practice? the defense was and how many players the opposing coach sent to help, it usually didn't matter against Iverson. We thought Tim Hardaway's crossover was the best and fastest ever, but then AI showed up, crossed Michael Jordan, and Hardaway immediately 
seemed less cool and less dangerous. <laughs> With the mesmerizing combination of speed and ball handling, the answer was the most feared guard of his era, even more so than Kobe. Kobe would always get his numbers, but Allen Iverson could embarrass you, break your ankles, and your spirit. Right. Just ask Ty Lue. You say Number it. one. Kyrie Irving. Kyrie. Kyrie Irving is the best ball handler the NBA has ever seen. I he agree. He's completely ambidextrous, and yes, it doesn't sir. matter to him if he dribbles with the right or left. Yes, Kyrie sir. is incredibly quick and has a ball on a string with such ease. And, it, and his layup package is unmatched, man. It's like his dribbling is completely improvisational. In fact, his dribbling looks like an Uncle Drew commercial, but it happens on the grandest stage and against the best players Will in the world. See I reverse? still feel sorry for you, Brandon Knight. But not only is Kyrie <laughs> the greatest ball handler in NBA history, he's arguably the best below the rim finisher ever. Yes, with sir. With a package deeper than the Mariana Ooh. Trench. And while there are many <laughs> players who can finish effectively with both hands, what sets Kyrie apart is the ability to jump off both legs, which is extremely rare. LeBron, for example, has a trampoline in his left leg, but I don't think I've ever seen him jump off his right. That's why Kyrie is almost impossible to block when he drives the basket, because the defender can't take anything away from him and basically has to choose his poison, as Kyrie has counter moves for everything defense throws at him. Yeah. Irving has secretly become a true master of pick and roll and one of the best shooters ever at his mm. position. Hesitations, spins, crossovers, you never know what trickery he's going to pull out of his That's seat. That's why he's my favorite. And that's why it's a real spectacle to watch him play. Yes, sir. Great video from Nonstop Sports. I'm over here spitting everywhere. <laughs> Kyrie at number one. I agree. I think Kyrie Irving is the best ball handler ever, bro. He's my favorite point guard. I think Steph Curry might be more effective. I will be honest. Kyrie, Kyrie scores, but he's not scoring like Steph. You feel me? So Steph might be better, but Kyrie Irving is my ultimate favorite point guard. He's actually my favorite player. After Kyrie, I'm going to say LeBron. But that's just in terms of favorite. Obviously, LeBron is better and he's more effective. LeBron's the GOAT. But my favorite player, Kyrie Irving, man. He's just so pretty with the ball, cuz. No homo. He's so pretty and his moves are so crazy. He's so shifty. Like I said, his layup package, unmatched, man. It'd be crazy. But let me know what y'all thought down in the comments, man. Let me know who's your top five when it comes to ball handling. Let me know down in the comments, bro. And hey, do not say flight reacts. Or I'm blocking you. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'll see y'all next time. Peace.